all your school rugby all in one place. This is Next Gen 50. guys welcome to next gen 15 and in today's video we are going to be looking at the top 10 things to look forward to in the south african school rugby season so if you are new to our channel please don't forget to click that subscribe button as well as bell notification and as soon as new videos are released you'll be the first to know so let's get into the list in 10th place we have the maritzburg college class of 2022 now, not many of the new generation will fully understand just how dominant Barrettsburg College were as a rugby force from the 1970s until the dawn of the new century. Easily the best English-speaking rugby program in the country who regularly bested today's traditional powerhouses, the school went through somewhat of a barren period in recent times. There were glimpses of the program's pedigree, but it was nowhere near the consistency of the skonk Nicholson days. Fast forward to 2022 and there's a quiet confidence amongst Maritzburg College supporters that this could be their year. Last year's rookies showed some real promise with the team recording wins over the likes of Glenwood and Hilton. With a backline that is among the best in the country and a Ford Packer willing to put in the hard yards, expect this to be a big year. Keep a close eye on the likes of Liam Prince-Lewis, Span Lopo, AJ Knutzer and of course powerful backline star Lili Bester. At 9 we have the Battle of the Flower Hobs. When can one remember a year where there was so much quality in the pivot position? To say that there will be competition this year at number 10 is an understatement. Many of the young talents on display this year would have walked into an SA school side in years gone by. Liam Kuhn is everyone's number one pick, the son of a former Springbok, the pedigree is there and with a generational gym outfit having huge expectations upon them, expect Kuhn to deliver the goods. Spang Lopo of Maritzburg College played most of his rugby last year at fullback, but we understand his preferred position is at Flauf. A terrifying prospect, Lopo possesses electrifying speed, an educated boot and an ability to break open play that defies imagination. Then there is Mithle Matanise, another pivot who many are speaking about. The Greyhound youngster displayed his skills at an early age and his boot speed and movement are something way beyond most of his peers. Greyhound possesses an exciting team this year and Matanise will no doubt be a key figure as they push towards a top 10 finish this year. When it comes to a powerful boot, few could compete with Rondebosch pivot jock Euster. A key all-round sportsman, Euster continues the tradition where excellent cricketers make for exciting pivots. His game management and rugby IQ are up there with the best of them and he should make an exciting Rondebosch team that much more formidable. Stone Heymans is another youngster we are hearing fantastic things about. The young Afi's Flaff is packed full of potential with some coaches labelling the most under the radar pivot in the country right now. Afis are stacked with talent this year and with Heymans at 10 there is no doubt an exciting background with formidable forwards that will help him out tremendously. Last but not least we have Thurlin Williams from Paul Boys. Williams is one of those players who we know would walk into a national team in any normal year, but as mentioned this year is extremely tough with quality flowers in abundance. A competitive athlete with strong running game and overall game management, we believe that this increased competition will bring out the best of him. Other flowers to keep an eye on are Divan Spannenberg from Noordhevel, Tyler Safuer from Monument and Tariq Apollos from Gasfontein. As mentioned, the position this year is stacked. In 8th place we have the Grey High School vs St Andrews Derby. A fixture traditionally dominated by the Kebecha side, in recent times St Andrews have been a real thorn in the side of Grey High School. This year will be an interesting fixture to say the least with both teams having new coaching staff in the form of Johnny Mallet and Robbie Kempson. Grey High School have what many feel is one of their best teams in the last few years with Zuki Tom, Mitle Matanise and Vuyo Nkopela all making the EPD squad last year. While St Andrews did not have any EPD players last year, they as always will be a well coached outfit and will do their best to get one over on their fierce Eastern Cape rivals once again. In 7th place we have the Battle of the Southern Suburbs. Although the last two years of rugby have been interrupted, it is fair to say that West Chetty's Bishops were by some distance the strongest team on paper within the Southern Suburbs. With this year's group not having had a full season since under 15, it feels as if a reset has taken place and the traditional fixtures will have more grunt to them this year. 
Eastie Mazze stars in solid coaching staff and with Bishops having ridden high over the last few years, we have no doubt that Sachs, Weinberg and Rondebosch will be doing all they can to ensure that they're in top of the pile this year. At sixth place, we have the Pretoria Cup. It has been many years since the competition has taken place between the four giants of Pretoria Rugby and this year looks to be a bumper one with all teams having plenty of talent on display. Vardekloof and Menlo Park, while not favourites, still possess some excellent talent and Uffie's men you feel have their best team in many years. All eyes will be on Gasfontein, however, as they will want to make up for disappointing results from the 2021 season and with Bart Schoolman having been hired as head of sport, himself a respected rugby coach and administrator, could he be the trick up the Gasfontein sleeve? We cannot wait to find out. At fifth place we have Grant, Como and Craven Week. While all the attention is generally focused on the larger schools during the season, Craven Week and Grant Coma are a real chance for the youngsters from smaller schools and unions to showcase their ability and oftentimes can make or break their chances to gain a professional contract or earn a scholarship at a university. Two years without Craven Week and Grant Coma is two years too long. How many stars have not had their chance to shine? How many youngsters' futures have forever been altered due to the situation? Sadly, we'll never know the true cost. In fourth place, we have K-Day. Unless you're from the Eastern Cape or have spent time in the city of Munkanda, you'll likely not understand how big this derby really is and how rich and deep the history of this rivalry runs. This year's derby is especially interesting as the coaching changes have been significant. Firstly, James Wynn Stanley has joined the coaching staff at Kingswood. A fantastic talent at school level where he played for one of Dale's finest teams, the class of 1999, Eastern Cape rugby flows deep in the veins of Wynn Stanley and judging by his transformation of the Hudson Park rugby program, there's no doubt that he can truly reshape Kingswood into his image. The twist in this coaching saga is Johnny Mallard leaving his post as Kingswood coach and heading over to their arch rival St Andrews College. At first glance, the casual observer may note this as treachery, but what is not known to those outside the circle is that Mallet is in fact an old Andrian and was a very prominent player for the school captaining the first team. Whatever happens, K-Day as always will be filled with excitement and to see two of the Eastern Cape's top young coaches go head to head will no doubt make the day one to remember. In third place, we have Gray College vs. Paul Jim. Mark the 2nd of May down in your calendar because this is the must event of the 2022 calendar year. The clash of the school rugby titans will have an additional edge this year with Jim ending another long unbeaten grey run in 2021. This year's Paul Jim side is a golden generation with many of the key players from last year's group returning. Many including this pundit felt it may have been a year too early for them but they defied expectations and grinded out a fantastic result. To add to the excitement of this year's fixtures, the fact that the great college rookies of this year have their own golden generation, with many at the school feeling they are on a par with the classes of 2007 and 2019, which is saying a lot. The head-to-head -head battles will be immense, the physicality and agility of the great forwards versus one of the best backlines in recent memory will make this a clash worth remembering. In second place, we have the return of Sean Erasmus. Although there have been many coaching changes in the 2022 season, easily the most publicised has been the return of the prodigal son, Sean Erasmus to Paul Boys. A coach with an extremely high pedigree, Erasmus turned Glenwood into school rugby powerhouse during his time at the Green Machine. His appointment at Paul Boys was seen as a masterstroke. A programme that is known for attracting some of the best talent in the country needed a strong-minded and astute tactician to take individual talents and mould them into a cohesive unit. Few could have predicted the success Erasmus would have had, including three unbeaten seasons on the trot and an unprecedented four straight Paul Derby wins. An in-demand coach, he left his post at the end of 2018 to take up a job at the Lions. This channel does not delve into politics, but many felt that his talents were underutilized at the Johannesburg-based outfit, and their loss is Paul Boy's gain. And of course, number one should be no surprise, it is the Paul Derby. The biggest school rugby derby on the planet returns and with it comes the aforementioned return of Sean Erasmus who will pit his wits against Jim's Peter Rousseau. Although Jim have a golden generation, one should not underestimate the Paul Boys outfit this year who as always are stacked with talent. The head-to-heads in this fixture will be intriguing to say the least. Kuhn vs Williams, Martins vs Heinrich, De Jong and Carew vs Oppermann and Van Eekuk, to just to name a few. Whatever your preconceived notions, expect the derby as always to be a tightly contested affair with plenty of drama and action to be expected. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. What are the events that you are most looking forward to within the South African 2022 school rugby season? Let us know in the comment section down below and don't forget to click that like button as well as the subscribe button as well as bell notification.